This movie shows you how to modify three simple objects. Begin by creating a windsock attached to this pole here. Turn on AutoGrid and create a simple cylinder. Don't forget to turn off AutoGrid when you're done. If you want, you could open the Material Editor and drag the stripes material onto the cylinder to make it look more like a windsock. See the movie about materials for more information. Go to the Modify panel and change the parameters of this cylinder. In this scene, you can set the radius to 0.4 meters and the height to 3 meters to give the windsock the right proportions. If you press F4 to display edge faces, You'll see the result when you change the number of segments and sides. But you can do more using modifiers, which act like filters to reshape and adjust your object in different ways. You'll find these modifiers in the modifier list. It's a bit unnatural for a windsock to look so straight, so you might want to add a bend modifier. Notice how it's added on top of the original cylinder entry. You can keep stacking modifiers on top of one another, hence the name Modifier Stack. When a modifier is selected in the stack, its parameters display in the Modify panel. In the viewport, an orange gizmo appears on the cylinder to represent the bend modifier. Change the bend angle. Orbit around and press F3 to see the results better. In this case, the gizmo is curving nicely, but the cylinder itself is only skewed. To understand why, take a look at the cylinder's geometry. Notice that the walls of this cylinder are made of single polygons on each side, and these walls are rigid. In order to bend this cylinder, you need to increase the number of segments height-wise. You can do this at the object level, where you changed its parameters earlier, but you don't have to undo your work to get back to that point. That's the beauty of the modifier stack, in that it keeps the history of your changes. Simply click on the cylinder entry to display its parameters. If it's not already active, turn on Show End Result to see the bend. If you crank up the height segments one at a time, you see the effect it has on the cylinder. The more segments you add, the more polygons the object has. It's up to you to find the ideal value based on the work you're doing. Press F3 again to display shaded surfaces. At any time, you can go back up the stack to the bend level and make more changes to the angle, direction, and so on. The modifier stack is pretty flexible that way. Most windsocks are more narrow or tapered at one end. Select the taper modifier from the list and set its amount to about negative 0.6. This doesn't give the expected result because of how modifiers are evaluated in the stack. First there's a cylinder, which is then bent. So now the taper modifier is not dealing with a cylinder anymore, but a curved object, and that's what it's trying to affect. In other words, you need to taper this cylinder before you bend it. As you can see, the order of the modifiers in the stack is very important. Again, you can fix this easily without undoing what you've already done. To reorder the stack, simply drag the modifier to its correct position. Of course, if you know beforehand where a modifier should go, you don't need to place it at the top and then move it down. You can select where you want to insert it. Let's say you want to add a twist modifier between bend and taper. You can select the taper entry, then add a twist modifier, and it appears above the selected entry. Remember, you can always change the order of modifiers. If you add a modifier by mistake, or simply want to remove a modifier from the stack, select the modifier, and then click the trash can icon. Here are a few more useful modifiers. Create a simple sphere, and add the terrain material to make it look more like a boulder. In the Modify panel, Set the level of detail higher, say about 64 segments, and then add a noise modifier. Play with the strength values to shift the points on the sphere in the X, Y, and Z directions. This can be emphasized with the fractal options and other parameters. Another useful modifier is skew. You can apply it to this flag. Set the direction to 90 degrees in the x-axis. Then set the amount to about 0.5. The flag is skewed from the middle, and one end is too high now. Expand the skew entry, select center, 
then move the center of the modifier towards the pole. The flag still looks much too stiff. Select the plane in the stack, then apply a ripple modifier. Adjust the amplitude and wavelength parameters a little bit. That doesn't look like much yet, but that's only because the level of detail on the plane is low. Go back to the plane parameters and set the length segments to 12 and height segments to 24. Now you see ripples, but they don't make sense for a flag. To make them more realistic, you can move the center of the ripple effect. In the modifier stack, expand the ripple entry, select center, and move it off to one side. You can adjust the amplitudes, wavelength, ultimately even animate the phase and so on. You get the idea. Keep in mind that you can animate most modifier parameters. When you're not using the modifiers to animate, however, and you've finished adjusting them, it's a good idea to collapse the stack to a single entry to reduce the number of calculations. But do this only when you're absolutely certain you're done with the modifiers. When you right-click a modifier in the stack, you have the option of collapsing the stack up to that level or collapsing the whole stack. If you collapse the entire stack, a warning appears. Click Yes to continue. The model is now an editable mesh, which is geometry without simple parametric values. Rather, it is made of points, edges, and polygons, which you use to sculpt the surface of the object directly. Press Ctrl-Z to undo this for now, and take a look at another way of collapsing the stack. Simply right-click the object, and then choose Convert To from the Quad menu. Here are three options, including Editable Mesh, which you saw a moment ago. Editable Mesh and Editable Poly are essentially the same type of object. An editable poly is also made of points, edges, and polygons. The difference is that editable poly has more to offer in terms of editing tools and should be used whenever possible. The good news is that you can convert the object back and forth between the two modes if you need both. Use editable poly objects for their editing tools, then convert them to editable mesh for export if necessary.